Memories of the Horses Field. Hello again. As you probably hear, we're not a million miles out of town at the moment, or at least not in a rural location for this little walk. Today, in fact, quite the opposite. We're pretty much in the middle of Douglas. And it's a walk around an old stomping ground. My old stomping ground, as it happens. Suggestion my better half made to me, saying, why don't you go to somewhere that you used to really love walking around and spending time as a child and uh, go and see what it's like now, whether it's changed, what's there, what isn't, and see how you feel about it. Which struck me as quite a good idea for something a bit different. And so that's what we're going to do. So we're just off Peel Road. As it happens, behind oh, the total garage there, the one opposite the Alaman Newspapers building, opposite the Paul Rose power station for that matter, with its incredible rocket-like chimney these days. Not the way I remember it in the old concrete one, which not to be recalled. But and I uh, used to spend many an hour down here, running down off the back of what was then as now, I suppose, the horse's field. That's what it was to us, in any case. I don't know what its official name is, probably Q789B or something, but... It was the horse's field where you'd be amazed to hear, apparently, they used to exercise horses, although... I have to be honest and say I don't know whether I recall them exercising horses there in my time, so it might have been a little bit before that, going back to maybe the 50s or earlier. And this is where I spent all my childhood happily running around, playing games. Marvellous it was too. And we had the Gooseneck, which is now a housing estate, of course, right below Balakameen High School. The Gooseneck there. And below that you'd come across what were called the Bumps at the top of Balakameen Drive. And from there you would head down to the horse's field. So let's walk up and see what we can see. You can tell it's the back of a garage. Jeff Jukes, we always used to call it, as you head up that ramp behind the total garage, and I think it was owned by Jeff Jukes at one stage, the garage there. Now, uh, I don't actually recall, it's uh, one of the electrical garages they do. I think they do electrics, they certainly do things like exhausts and tyres and such like. It might even be an ACS or it was at one stage. Still crowded with cars and vehicles, people coming and going all the time. But just above that, right at the bottom end of what is the uh, horse's field, was what was known to all of us who grew up and played around here as the maze. Let's go and take a look at it around here, but it's still here. And just come to one side of the central track off the field. This runs right behind, as it were, looking along the front of the row of houses which off the back lane, or my back lane anyway. It's Balakameen Drive, I think it is the lane that runs around Balakameen Drive, the even numbers which look out across the way there towards the power station and the Citroen garage. And here was the maze. Still here a little bit. Not a maze in the accepted term of the word, or one you might have seen if you've been to a stately home. But a maze nonetheless, as far as we were concerned. A maze of snowberry bushes and there's still some here you'll have seen these everywhere I don't think you see quite as many as you used to or at least I don't seem to see them as much maybe I'm not looking in the right places anymore but snowberry grows pretty much anywhere wild and they're five foot high or so maybe taller sometimes spindly wiry bushes this time of the year here they are all spread out almost as if they've been planted deliberately Maybe they were some years ago to give a bit of shelter. But they've certainly been here as long as I can recall. Thin, thin branches, and in the summer, of course, a profusion of 
pale green leaves and then these white snow white berries but here's one just one berry <laughs> and all these bushes around here there's just one single white berry standing out on this little spindly stem pretty much dried out now i think we we'll leave it be maybe the birds will eat it and spread the seeds for some more snowberry bushes to start life and in the height of summer these would form a dense covering a mat so that as now if you crouch down and get underneath you could go down if you were small or indeed if you were, were happy to go along on your hands and knees as most kids are you could scurry along underneath these bushes in between the paths and roots which were formed and hide and seek and disappear and smell the wild garlic and it was terrific and not quite as much of a maze as I remember but here it is still a few bushes there and I wonder if anyone still goes round and runs in between them during the summer let's retrace our steps a bit so we head back towards the main central track and this track or route runs right the way down the middle of the field really and I don't think it was worn by cars or sheep cows or animals but generations of school children and it still is a couple of people passed me a few moments ago and these will be the kids all up at Balakamine High School, which has been there since, what, the 20s, I think, hasn't it? Or at least the building has. And those who lived in the estates around and about, certainly if you lived in the lower end, perhaps, of Balabrui, or if you lived in the estates around Balakamine, where I was, or further afield, down across the road, across the main Peel Road, and off towards Pull Rose or Annika, this was a very handy shortcut, rather than going down the road. No self-respecting child goes down the pavement. You'd cut across what was then the gooseneck field, not built up of course, just a raw roof, a rough field with a few hedges and grass. You'd scramble across there, across the top end of the Balakamine Drive, which wasn't made up at the very top end, that was just the bumps as they were, an unadopted stretch of road which is now just a through part of the estate. And then cut across to the other side, to the top end of the horse's field. The very top end now has some of the houses from the uh, new Balakamine estate on it. But the lower part where we are now, running down to the back of the garage, and then just uh, above Peel Road, was all the horses' field. And now it's all completely built in, really, right in the middle. But it was a great shortcut if you were heading that way. Marvellous. Now we just go the other side of the central track through the field. We come into what was certainly in former times an old farm. Now I'm not Peter Kelly so I'm afraid I can't give you the chapter and verse with all the details on exactly who it was and who ran it. I'm sure Peter could. But certainly as a child there were plenty of old buildings. They were all derelict so I guess it might have been abandoned or disused from the middle part of the 20th century, maybe the 20s, 30s, I don't know, somewhere around there. But certainly by the 60s the buildings were still around, there was a barn or two, the walls were still there, you could see bits and pieces. But I don't think it was farmed as such. But quite often as a child, pretty much in my preschool days I would think so, mid-60s, a neighbour would come along, Mr Cannon, now no longer with us sadly, come across the road and he'd take me, give my mother some blessed relief, so I'm sure I was a hideous child, paddle down the bottom end here of the horse's field, and we come round here, where we are now, and go and see the hens. Whose hens they were, I have no idea, but somebody in this little area now, there's still a wall area around here, all collapsed forward now, and just pretty much coming to rubble. But they come down here where all these stones are. Ooh. Pretty loose now. And 
the wall would run across here. Good height. And just down here, and I can tell where it was because the post is still standing, there was an enclosed area where someone kept a few hens. For the eggs, I assume. Now, whether it was someone off Belmont Hill or in the big house across the way here, Burnley, I think it was, I don't know. I do know it's terrific coming down with Mr Cannon to come and see them while my mum had a coffee in peace. And we just come and stand pretty much here. And just one of these substantial pillars left. And it really is quite a behemoth. It's, ooh, must be a good 12 foot high. Still got some architraving across the top just on one side and the ivy is spilling out down the other side where it's now crumbled off and dropped off. You get the impression that it had been quite a grand gateway here at some stage. But across here there would be some fencing. The other pillar disappeared behind a thicket of trees and I think it's collapsed. There it is, in fact it's collapsed right over. It been, looks like it's been knocked over by the trees as they've grown up. The sycamores around here now sadly lying like a, a dead beast across the earth here and being gradually covered over by the ivy. Been down for some time though. But up here would be the hens. And we'd stand here and I'd no doubt chum her away. And I'd eat hold my hand and we'd uh, see the hens and chuck them a few scraps if we had any. And then pedal back up home again. As we come down the bottom of the horse's field proper on the... what was the main drag? Bottom end looks pretty much as I remember it. Backs onto the the back lane, as I was saying, my back lane, right behind my old house at the end of Balakamin Avenue. And it always was a bit of a dumping ground. Mostly the vast majority of good neighbours have just put out their grass mowings, hedge clippings, green waste, all of which is long gone. But of course there's always a temptation for some people to use it as a bit of a dumping ground, as witness still today, I'm afraid. Plastic sheeting shouldn't be there. An old child's toy, Lord knows why that's there, and a wheelbarrow. Uh, well, it's not a wheelbarrow as such, it's a wheelless barrow, which has died in the undergrowth. <coughs> but it could go to the Civic Community Centre just across the way, just as easily. That's where it should have died. But some things never change. I'm reminded with the recent weather we've had with the snow, if there was decent snow, not that you get it that often in central Douglas, do you? But if we were lucky enough, as that's the way I viewed it as a child at least, to have good snow in the winter and the field was covered, this central runway was a fantastic crest run of a sledge route. From the top end where the old sod hedge is, now the back of the lower houses on the uh, new Balcombe estate, all those white houses, you could launch yourself off face down wellies trailing out the back in the desperate hope that you might be able to stop and come down this central route not quite as clearly defined as it used to be perhaps not helped by this thicket of sycamore down the bottom and holly which somewhat deviates the route and makes it slightly less clear to see from the bottom but you come whistling down here what felt like a thousand miles an hour and if you were lucky you could put your feet out towards the bottom pull yourself down or shoot off to one side into a tussock of snow-covered grass and go head over heels, laughing all the way. If you're unlucky, you didn't stop and you carried straight on down this track and got onto the really bumpy icy bit, which ran to the back of Jeff Duke's garage, where the garages still are, and crashed into a car. Well, no, I don't remember that happening, but you could end up right down the bottom there in the concrete, and that wasn't quite su such a good ending, I can tell you. But no one ever seemed to come to any serious harm, did they? And here's pretty much the end of Balakamin Avenue. Top end of Balakamin Avenue where the road, which is a cul-de-sac in essence, goes up a little lane into a turning area by some garages. And when you think of some of the things we played round here, then it does make it feel a long time ago. How many children now go out and play in the street? We did. A mixture of kids. I was always the youngest, so perhaps I was the least wanted, being the, you know, the young kid. Louis, as he's known. Oh no, we've got Louis again. 
but we play street games. And I, I guess, to a degree, you might have been one of the last generations to do so. Before the technological revolution, computer games came in. But we would play all sorts. May I? Do people still play May I? Bad egg or rotten egg. We have to think of groups and you throw the ball in the air. And you shout out a name and someone has to catch the ball and oh. Terrific. Germans and British. I know, not PC. But whatever sort of games. Hide and seek, everything. Scrambling in the field on the bikes. Not that we had mountain bikes as kids do now. You just had sit up and beg bikes. Or if you're really lucky, you can get a pair of ape hangers or cow horns on your bike. And again, some of the characters that came round. I don't think we had a baker that came directly up the avenue, but certainly there was the veggie man on a Saturday night in his old Bedford. I think it was a Bedford. Single light bulb in the back, a little pair of steps. All the ladies came out, went in, little mobile greengrocers. Many of those left? A great old character. Cap on. And the one distinctive thing I remember, that he had one ear larger than the other. Funny how you notice these things as children. But everyone came and got their vegetables there. Potatoes and their turnips and carrots and everything for the Sunday roast. They get their veggies for the week. And then in the summer you'd have the Wet herring man, is that, are they still going? A chap came up in an old green van. Austin, was it? Came up, parked down the avenue, opened the back door, and he'd ring a handbell. And then give his shout to let everyone know he was here. Wet herring, wet herring, wet herring. And the ladies of the street would come out. I shouldn't say that, should I? The ladies of the street. <clears throat> the housewives in the avenue would come out and they'd bring their bowls with them and get wet herring, fresh wet herring, herring just caught. Here on the right hand side, there used to be a spinny of wild plum, dozens of them, all thin, growing together in this copse or spinny, call it what you will. And you could weave your way across here, across the central pathway, onto the other side of the field, not that far away really, but it had the great advantage if you were a child, of course, that if you disappeared into the wild plums, or wild plum trees, I should say, then you'd disappear from the houses on the other side. A great advantage if you're a child up to no good. You don't want to be in parental view, do you? And once there, you seem to enter a, another world, and here, you just come down here, there's a feeling of it, there's another wall again, coming back to this old farm which used to be here. A lot of it gradually disappearing, some chunks falling down altogether. Whether through just the time and the wind and the rain and erosion, or through kids playing, petty vandalism, trees growing out and tree roots upsetting the foundations. A mixture of these things. Time, I suppose, is the short word. And again, ivy growing out over the top. But you can still see here, just in front of me, there's a great section of wall still eight foot high. Still in reasonable condition. Looks like it'll last another few years if nothing happens. But what has disappeared was if you went behind the plums you could... There was a doorway here. No door, but a doorway through this wall. Which now has disappeared. I think that section's collapsed altogether. And I'd be roughly here where there's a single sycamore standing. You could come through the doorway and you went into... What was happily referred to locally as the Bluebell Forest or Bluebell Woods. A bit too early to see the Bluebells, so I don't know whether they're still there or not. I hope they are, some of them at least. But there'd be a carpet of them in the summer. Beautiful. And the wild garlic before that, which is still there. Still seeing the old wild garlic leaf popping up here and there. Always early in the day, early in the year. And you'd come through here now. There's a, I've just come through where the wall's fallen down and the trees are growing up. But you get to this other side where it, it still was a feeling that you were in a private farm. Now, I don't think it would have been then. 
Who knows? If it was, then the farmer had long since moved on. He certainly wasn't around to chase you off. And there was nothing there, just old buildings and the plants, but you were hidden away and it was quiet and hushed. And you felt like you were in a secret world. Or a secret garden, rather like the book. But you just got the feeling of it now, it's less well defined than it was. There was an old barn just up the top here behind where some of the houses are now gone, just some rubble on the ground. But that was still standing with a bit of the corrugated iron roof left on it. And over here one summer's day I remember coming over in the, I don't know, I guess it'd be the late 60s. We were coming right the way across and... Oop. A chap turned up in a shiny excavator. JCB of some kind, I think. Started digging a big trench at three different levels. And the more we watched this from a distance and tried to wonder what he was doing, the more it looked a bit like a swimming pool. It seemed to have a shallow end, a middle end and a deep end, because there were three separate levels he dug against this wall. It must have been somewhere around here. I can't really see it anymore now. Just some crumbled stones and such like. And of course we asked him, as kids do, what are you doing, mister? And funnily enough, he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you a swimming pool. Wild excitement, I can tell you. The idea someone was going to make our own swimming pool for the kids of Balakameen Avenue and Balakameen Drive. Maybe the kids from Balabru, if we let them. But he dug out the trench, and it stayed there for years afterwards, and sometimes filled with water but only when it rained heavily. And we never did get the swimming pool, needless to say. And I never did find out what he was actually doing, perhaps just testing out his digger. But he dug away for a day or two, dug out the trench, and disappeared forever. And I think around here where this clump of brambles would be roughly where the barn was. Another great den to play. I smell of wood smoke in the air as I get to the top, which is rather nice. That always has a great feeling of bucolic glee, doesn't it? Wood smoke and it's very reminiscent of uh, happy times past. Or is that just me getting romantic in my old age? It's the latter, Howard. And this is pretty much as far as we can get now. And I see this would, as we come up here, there's a slightly sodden pathway. Which normally would be bringing us up to the, a sod hedge in the middle. The part where we used to launch off with our sledges. Or jump over with our bikes in the summer. And across there there was a little sort of flat plateau. Then you went up another little rise. And you'd be on to the top end of Balakameen Drive. And then the bumps, the stretch of unadopted road which so often seemed to get around housing estates weird isn't it i never can work out how that happened because i think the housing estate was built around the 50s and uh, it was certainly unadopted until they built this new estate here and there we have it the horses field still here an oasis in my mind perhaps in the middle of douglas a wasteland to others without the memories to go with it but now an estate locked piece of real estate belonging to well, i don't know Perhaps someone will write in. In years gone by, it was a gentleman called Mr. Ney. I don't know whether Mr. Ney's still around, or I'm fairly sure he's not on the island. And you sometimes wonder whether some of these patches of land people forget <laughs> they own it. In the meantime, the horse's field just carries on pretty much as it was. Long may it rain. It just struck me. Rather appropriate name of he does to them, Mr. Ney, owning the horse's field. <laughs> <laughs>